This is a tale of two very different cities, two remarkable men, and two similar but different inventions that could revolutionise car engines. What has the French Riviera got in common with Melbourne? They both host Grand Prix, of course, but they also both have companies developing a new kind of engine that runs on pure air. Now, power tools, of course, have run on air power for decades, but no one's been able to turn that technology to cars. Well, there's a French company here in Nice that's done it. Maybe the air car revolution is about to happen. The cost of feeding the average family's car with fuel is about $60 per week and rising. For a hybrid, the average is about half that. But imagine this, a whole week of driving for only a few dollars. Welcome to the place that could make it all happen. This is the factory of MDI, Motor Development International. It's run by inventor Guy Negro. Fifteen years ago, this French engineer was designing state-of-the-art Formula One engines. Today, he's leading the race to design the world's first commercial air-driven car. His factory is experimenting with vans, taxis and people movers that could one day go non-stop for an incredible 4,500 kilometres on just one tank of fuel. Guy Neg has been working on this air car for 10 years. These are just some of the prototypes. And when I say air, it runs on compressed air, of course. The compressed air pushes the pistons in the engine up and down rather than tiny explosions of petrol, like in a conventional engine. But doing that with air is a real challenge. But the reward is you end up with a car whose only emission from the exhaust pipe is clean, breathable air. Of course, the real ingenuity is under here, the engine. Now, it's a four-cylinder piston engine, just like a regular car, but there are significant differences. For a start, that engine weighs less than half of a regular engine. That's because a lot of the components are made of aluminium. Now, the reason they can do that is because there's no combustion. This is driven by air pressure. In fact, you can hold your hand on that engine when it's running, and it would just feel warm. So it's well below the melting temperature of aluminium, which means that something like 80% of this engine is made from that lightweight material. So instead of those tiny hot explosions of petrol and oxygen pushing the pistons up and down, like in a normal internal combustion engine, the air engine has compressed air doing the job instead. This is what the air car looks like underneath the seats. There are three compressed air cylinders. Cutaway models of them here. Now, the pressure in these things is 300 bar. That's 150 times the pressure you'd pump your car tyres to. So, very high pressure environment. And that's why they're made of carbon fibre. If they made these of metal, if you had a car accident, they could explode and send shrapnel everywhere. Whereas the carbon fibre just splits. Now, the chassis itself is made of aluminium. The key to an air car is to keep everything lightweight so you get the best possible mileage. Okay, let's give it a go. Clutch out. Hey, it's working. Push-button gears for now, but the final version will be automatic. Now, keep in mind this is just a prototype, so it feels and drives pretty much like a normal car. Now, when they finally go to market with these cars, they say they'll have a top speed of about 110 kilometres an hour, and you should get about 200 kilometres out of the tanks in the back before you have to refill, which, given it's for city driving, it's pretty good, I'd say. The car could be refilled from a compressed air service station in just three minutes. Or plug it into a power point at home and the onboard compressor will do the job in four hours for about $2 worth of electricity. For country driving, they plan to use a hybrid engine, so there'll be petrol or even some biofuel that will help the air. So they should get a much faster car and also one that'll get a lot further. The hybrid engine would use a small amount of petrol to compress air as you go. And on just one tank of petrol, you could get from Brisbane to Perth or from Los Angeles to New York. How's that for fuel economy? MDI plan to have their first cars on sale in Europe by next year. Engines will be available in two, four and six cylinders, with car prices starting from less than $15,000. 
Later in the show, the Melbourne, Australia part of the story. The backyard inventor with his own air engine. And it's a little beauty. Earlier in the show, we showed you how one man's passion for air could save us a fortune at the petrol pump. Well, 16,000 kilometres away, a very different air engine revolution is taking place. I'm at the wholesale fruit and veggie market in Melbourne. Six o'clock in the morning, and as you can see, it's total chaos here. Not the sort of place you'd expect to see the demonstration of a brand new technology. Yet, that's exactly what we're about to witness. The markets are noisy and pretty polluted, thanks to all those petrol and gas-powered trolleys and forklifts. Engineer and inventor Angelo Di Pietro is hoping to put a stop to all that using his own air engine powered trolley. The remarkable thing about Angelo's engine is its size. This is the petrol engine that came out of that car and he replaced it with this. It weighs just 13 kilograms and the reason that's possible is its ingenious design. Instead of pushing pistons up and down like in a conventional petrol engine and in the French air motor, here, compressed air moves a single rotary piston around to power the central drive shaft. The beauty of the design is that the engine parts hardly touch. A layer of air cushions the rotation of the piston, so there's very little loss of energy to friction, and so very little loss of power. In a normal car, much of the engine power output can be lost running the engine itself and things like the gearbox. Angelo's rotary engine will be much more efficient. There's no gearbox, few parts to move, and the engine itself is incredibly light. So much of the power goes straight to the wheels. Its size to power ratio is incredibly good. There's not many car engines that you can hold in your hands. And Angelo has plans for a new engine weighing just six kilos, less than half the weight of this one. For 30 years, Angelo has dreamt of creating the perfect air engine. And he's got home video evidence that his rotary air motor has got many more applications than just the veggie markets. It works on water, in cars, and is powerful enough to pull heavy loads. Angelo is still refining his engine. When the trolley is ready for the markets, there will be no more dangerous fumes, and it will be simple to refill. To fill up, of course, you don't need petrol, just a bit of compressed air. It takes about two or three minutes to fill up, and for that you get about two hours of driving. The trolley's already got the thumbs up down at the markets. So you reckon this is the future? It's got to be. It's got to be, mate. This is uh, the intention. Tirra is going to help uh, the environment. It's going to help the, the, the health of people and uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to generate many thousands of jobs. So on different sides of the world, in different ways, two men are doing what was once thought impossible and changing the way we could all live beyond tomorrow.